Hi everyone, so I'm back with another great off-campus opportunity and this one is with ServiceNow. So ServiceNow is hiring freshers with 0 to 2 years of experience and this is a great opportunity to all of you freshers that are looking for a job and let me tell you ServiceNow is one of the best companies to work at. They have a package of 40 LPA plus and they have one of the best work-life balance in the industry. So surely this is a great opportunity and in this video we'll be talking about the opening, we'll be talking about the eligibility, We'll be talking about how you can get your resume shortlisted and we'll be talking about how you can clear the interviews as well. So make sure that you watch this video till the end. Now, just a quick reminder that I make a lot of videos about off-campus opportunities and guides on how you can crack them. So if you're a fresher or a college student looking for an internship or a job, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss on any opportunities that are out there. So all you have to do is be subscribed and stay tuned for the videos. Now coming back to this opportunity, let's get the eligibility out of the way first because then a lot of people keep commenting which year is eligible or which year is not eligible. So if you have zero to two years of experience or if you graduated in 2025 or before, then you are eligible to apply for this. Okay. So if you graduated in 2025 or 2024 or 2023, then you are eligible. 2025, including 2025 and before you are eligible to apply for this all right that is the eligibility if you still have any doubt then feel free to ask me in the comments i'll be there to clarify it there for you now the most important thing for service now is getting your resume shortlisted because of course the competition is going to be high the ats screening is going to be tough so you need to make sure that the resume has that your resume has all of the right content and that's what i'm here for i'm going to make sure that your resume passes the ats and it passes all the screening and is able to get shortlisted. So let's get the basics of the resume out of the way first. You already know your resume needs to have a high ATS score. Make sure it has an ATS score of above 80 at the very least. Okay. Make sure you have a proper template. Make sure you have a proper format. Make sure that the white spaces and the formatting, the fonts, everything is correct. Okay. This is the basics of having a good resume. You need to have an ATS friendly resume. You need to make sure that the formatting, template, everything is proper. And I'll also give you a template in the description box. So you don't need to worry. You can just make your resume according to that template. Now, the second thing and the most important thing about your resume is what you have in there. Okay. Because even if you have the most perfect template, if the content of the resume is not up to the mark, then you will get rejected. Right. So what all do you need to put in your resume? Now, first of all, what I will be doing for you is I'll be giving you a list of keywords according to the JD, according to the job description. These are the keywords that you can put in your resume to have a better chance of getting shortlisted or have a better chance of passing the screening system. So I will give you a list of keywords like I usually do. It will be in the description box. But again, I keep reminding you in all of my videos, do not put anything that you don't know in your resume. Okay. You can learn and then you can put. So the list of keywords you can find in the description box, but only go to that after watching the video. Don't add anything blindly. Okay. Now, apart from the keywords, what are the things that you need to put in your resume? First of all, you need to have a basic thing that is a programming language, right? So you need to showcase that you have a good expertise in any programming language. Now the programming languages that will give you an advantage here are Java, Python or JavaScript. Okay. What I suggest is have knowledge of JavaScript if you can. And along with that, have either Java or Python. That's what I will suggest. Okay. Because they work with Java and JavaScript. So if you're able to then put JavaScript and then put either one of Java or Python. If you have all of them, then all the better. Okay. So you need to showcase that you have a good hand in any programming language. These three are the one that their preference lies in. Apart from that, of course, the most important part of your resume are the project section. I already tell you, right? If you're a fresher, the most important part of your resume is the project section. What kind of projects do you need to make? If you have a web dev project, either full stack or front end back. And if you have any kind of web dev project that will give you a lot of edge here. Okay. Because the role aligns with that. So if you have a back end front end or even better, a full stack project, then showcase that in the resume. Okay. Give a link to your GitHub, give a link to your deployed project. Both of these things are going to help you. So if you are able to put at least put one web dev project, any kind, it doesn't matter whether it is Mern stack or Java full stack, both are fine, but try to keep at least one web dev project in the resume. And of course, if you're able to integrate AI in the project, if you're able to use some open AI or some other AI Gemini's API in the resume, all the better. Because a lot of companies, pretty much all the companies like look for AI skills right now. You already know how the 
like world is moving towards AI, right? So if you're able to put a bit of AI integration in the project, that will go a long way. But if you're not able to, that is fine as well. But do put one web dev project. Apart from that, if you have Python project, if you have data project, that is fine as well. But try to have one web dev project, okay? Apart from that, if you have good coding profiles, put it. If you've solved a lot of coding problems, put it because they do care about your problem solving skills as well, okay? Once you make your resume, keeping all of these things in mind, you're gonna have a great shot at getting shortlisted. And of course, I'll be giving you the keywords as well. So have a look at there as well. Now, after you get shortlisted, the next part is going to be the interviews. So let's talk about how you can prepare for the interviews and basically clear it. Now for the interviews, there are a few things that you need to be prepared for. First is of course your DSA and problem solving. Other is CS fundamentals. So ServiceNow is one of those companies that actually care about your CS fundamentals a lot, especially object-oriented programming. So you need to be good in CS fundamentals. Of course, the resources to prepare for are in the description box. And one more thing I'll be putting in the description box is the interview experiences of this company, okay? Even I have recorded two interview experiences with the employees of ServiceNow, people who have recently cracked ServiceNow. I'll be giving you the interview experiences I've recorded with them. They're great videos. You'll be getting to know exactly how the interview process will be. So make sure you go through that. We go through those videos. And apart from that, I'll also give you some articles that you can go through. Once you go through their interview experiences, you'll be able to understand what the process is going to be like and what they'll be expecting of you. But in a nutshell, like I mentioned, you'll have DSA and problem solving of a good level, not a very high level, but of a medium hard level, you can say. So you need to be able to solve medium hard lead code problems. For DSA, I'll give you resources in the description box. Do not worry about that. Apart from DSA, you'll have CS fundamentals. Most importantly, you'll have uh, OOP, you'll have DBMS, you'll have SQL, you'll have database related questions, and you'll have operating system as well. But the most important will be OOP and DBMS. Okay. Again, resources to prepare CS fundamentals will be in the description box. Apart from all of that, of course, you'll have questions about your projects, about your resume, about the skills of the JD. Okay. So like I said, that's why it's important that you don't put anything in your resume that you're not confident with. Otherwise you'll get rejected in the interview. So you will have questions about the JD. You'll have questions about your resume and the skills. So again, this is something that you can prepare for. Just go through your resume very well. Whatever you have on there, make sure that you're very well versed, well versed with each and every topic on your resume and in your projects. Okay. Once you do all of that and go through the description box and prepare well with the resources, you'll be in a very good position that you're able to clear the interviews. And of course, for applying, I already told you how to make your resume. If you want to go down the route of a referral, you can do that as well. And I'll be soon making a video about how to ask for referrals. So make sure that you stay tuned for that because a lot of people get confused about how to ask for referral. So if you're able to, then you can ask some service now employee to refer you. That is also a possibility here. Okay. So follow all the steps that I've told you. The link to apply is in the description box. It has just opened today itself. So don't worry, you have a little bit of time. Don't be in a rush to apply. Have a proper resume, be fully prepared and then apply. So that's pretty much it. Let me know in the comments if you have any doubts and watch out for more videos because I'll be making a lot more videos about off-campus opportunities. So yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching.